Okay, so let's get started creating a pivot table. When I'm looking at my data here, I first of all have one continuous block of data. And this is a tabular style data, so I have my headings across the top, and each uh, column represents a field, and each row represents a record for all this data. As long as my cursor is inside this one solid continuous block of data, I can go ahead and hit insert and insert a pivot table based off of my worksheet and my range into a new worksheet here and I can get started. When I have this pivot table uh, active, I have two contextual tabs at the top of the screen, options and design, and I also get a field list on the right side. So we're going to need to use all three of these pieces to really be successful here. I'm going to start by adding a couple of fields that I want to use for this particular pivot table. So if I check off salesperson, I'm telling the pivot table to grab all the unique values from my source data and show them grouped automatically. So instead of a thousand rows, I here only get eight unique salespeople in this example. If I do the same thing for my product names, notice that by default both of these fields go into the row and then I get a grouped set of unique products. So by salesperson, then by product name, I'm looking at my data. But what's great about pivot tables is the ability to pivot very quickly and easily. Pivot tables are great for the flexibility and the speed to change something and find out a little bit more about your data when you're doing data analysis. So I'm going to drag my product name up here to column labels and you can see now it's more of a matrix style uh, pivot table where I have my salespeople in the labeling the rows as this box would tell you and the product names labeling the columns as this box would tell you. I could even flip flop them so maybe I want to make this a little bit better for the printed page and I want my products to go vertically and my salespeople which there's a few less of those to go horizontally so that it won't go quite as wide when I go to print this. Again, we're looking at it in a matrix intersection style, so I want to find a numeric value that I can put down here into that section, and I'm going to use extended price. By default, the sum of the extended price is calculated because it is grouping those extended prices by the products and then by the salesperson, and the intersection of any one of these is what I'm seeing as the actual value for that uh, particular intersection coming from the source data. One of the very last things I might do is change some of the ways that this looks and I can do that in the field itself by changing the field settings. As long as I am on that field I can click on it and change my number format to maybe be currency here. And When I click OK and OK everything changes accordingly. So that's an example of a really simple pivot table Stick around and we'll have more in the Pivot Table How Do I series in the rest of our Digital Workshop Center online videos. Thanks.